Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make a gravity geode shirt. But I'm not going to put geodes all over the shirt. I'm just going to do them on the top half. I have the shirt prepped like normal and I have it turned inside out. I'm going to use a washable marker and draw myself kind of a guideline of where I want the geodes to end on the shirt. I'm going to continue this line around to the back side just so that I have a guide on both sides of the shirt. I'm not going to tie any kind of a line right here because even though I want the geodes to end right here, I'm not going to end them with a straight line going all the way across. I want the geodes to kind of end organically and the dye to be able to move down the shirt. I'm going to find a place in this upper area of the shirt where I'd like for a geode to be, slide my hand down to where I would like for the very bottom of that geode to be, and start tying from there. I'm only tying one layer of fabric at a time, so I'm not tying the front and the back side of the shirt. Some of the geodes are going to wrap around to the other side, but in general I'm just tying one layer of fabric at a time. I'm going to vary the sizes of the geodes and the distance between the sinew lines that I'm going to tie for each geode. And I'm using sinew because sinew is wax coated, so whenever I tie a sinew line and I pull it really tightly, the dye won't be able to get underneath that line. So everywhere where I have a sinew line that's tightened down, it's going to be white under that line, which is going to give some definition to the shirt. I'm also going to try to keep my geodes a little bit messy. So I'm going to rough up the fabric as I'm tying it, kind of push or poke part of the fabric down inside on the center part of the geode and keep them as organic or natural looking as possible. I'm also going to divide some of my geode centers and make more than one center in the center of that geode. To do that, I'm going to take the sinew down through the center of the geode to go ahead and divide it into a couple of different areas. Then I'm going to tie each of those areas individually. Like I said, the more unusual or the messier, the more unique each center is on your geodes, really the better the shirt looks. The goal is, is to make sure the geodes and the centers of the geodes don't look like bullseyes. A bullseye is a really cool tie-dye design, but it's one that I want to look like a bullseye. I don't want my geodes to look like bullseyes. I personally like to make my geodes a little bit larger as well. I know some people who like to put a whole bunch of little bitty geodes all over their shirt, and that is perfectly fine. I think their shirts look really good. I don't like my shirt quite as busy, so I like to put some larger geodes on my shirt. But that's a personal preference thing. You can put as many or as few geodes on your shirt as you want to. The only thing that I really try to do is I try to watch the placement when I put geodes on the front of the shirt. I like to make sure they don't fall in an area that would maybe make a lady feel a little bit uncomfortable wearing the shirt. Okay, I'm almost finished tying the first geode. I'm going to go ahead and speed the video up a little bit and continue tying geodes until I get down to the line that I drew on the shirt.
So I've tied all the geodes that I'm going to put on the shirt and now I'm going to put some sinew lines in the space in between those geodes. I want to give a little bit of interest to that area. Then I'm going to place the shirt aside and allow it to dry out completely. I like to apply the dye to geodes when they're totally dry because with a thick fold like that, I find that I get better color saturation in the middle of the geodes if they're totally dry when I start applying the dye. If you'd like some more information about that topic, I have a blog post out on my website that gives some more information, and I have a link down below in the description for my website. I like to do my gravity dyes outside, so I've taken a metal shelving rack and placed it out underneath my trees, and I'm gonna place the shirt inside of a plastic container. And this one's not really deep, it's probably, I would say, only about two or three inches deep. Then, because the shirt is totally dry, I'm going to go ahead and spray it with a little bit of soda ash solution that I've placed inside of a spray bottle. That's going to help the dye stick to the shirt a little bit better. It's a little windy today, so I don't want the dye blowing around too much. Which, by the way, I wear my respirator even when I do dyeing outside. I don't want to accidentally inhale any of the powdered dye. So, sometimes whenever I do gravity dyes like this, I'll just pour the ice over the top of the shirt and apply the dye to the top of the ice. This time I'm going to go ahead and place the dye on the various sections of the geodes. And I'm doing that randomly. I'm starting with Peony from Dharma Trading Company. And I'm going to use each color that I'm putting on the shirt several times. And like I said, there's really no rhyme or reason to where I'm placing the colors. I'm just trying to be as random as possible with them. The other colors that I'm using are Royal Purple from Grateful Dyes. Strawberry Skies from Happy Cat Tie Dye, Plum Wine from Dye Spin, Jade and Tropical Dream from Dharma, and Teal Blue from Dye Spin. If you missed any of those colors, I have them all listed down below in the description for this video, as well as links to where you can purchase them. Now I'm going to add some additional soda ash over the top of the dye and I'm going to add the ice on top. So the goal is for the muck which is in this container, which by the way all muck is, is the melting ice that's mixed with the dye. That's the definition of muck. For the muck that's in the container to get pulled down through the rest of the shirt that's hanging over the edge. I've placed a container down on the second shelf of the shelving rack to catch any of that muck. So I've included some photos of what the shirt looked like as time went on. It was about 90 something degrees outside the day that I did this with a heat index of 100 and something. I left the shirt outside for probably about, I would say 18 hours. And it was about to storm so I went ahead and brought it inside and rinsed it. Because I had allowed the shirt or the dye enough time to bond with the fabric at such a high temperature, even though I didn't leave it for 24 hours, it's going to be fine. That's really the key. The kicker is, is you have to have a warm enough temperature where your dye or your shirt is processing for the dye to properly bond with the fabric. It really needs to be at least 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so... As you can see, there was not a whole lot of muck left in the container where I had the shirt. So almost all of that muck got pulled down through the shirt. And right now, the bottom part of that shirt is pretty dark. But once I rinse it, it's going to lighten up quite a bit. So I'm going to start rinsing the shirt in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I'm going to untie the shirt and warm the water up to hot and continue rinsing in hot water to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. 
I'm going to go ahead and soak the shirt instead of just rinsing for a long time. And to do that, I'm going to run some really hot water in my sink, add a little bit of Blue Dawn dish detergent to the water, and just allow the shirt to soak. When the water cools off, I'm going to change it out, and I'm going to continue that soaking process until my water is remaining almost clear. Then I'm going to put the shirt, along with some Dharma's Professional Textile Detergent, into my washing machine and wash it using a hot water cycle. Okay, so I've washed and dried the shirt, and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I think this one is really cool. I love this color combination of kind of the more reddish purples mixed with the teals. I think it's really pretty, and I love the dye movement. First off, you can see how much the shirt lightened up on the bottom. I'll be honest with you, I was a little bit concerned when I woke up the next morning and I saw how dark the bottom of the shirt was. But as I started rinsing it, it started to lighten up. And then after it came out of the washing machine, it was a lot lighter. And I really love it. I mean, I think it's a beautiful shirt. So I think all my geodes ended up looking really interesting. And I like the fact that the geode kind of over on that one shoulder wraps around to the other side. And the same thing with the geode on the sleeve. I like the geodes when they wrap around to the other side of the shirt. I just think it makes it look cool. I also like the centers of all my geodes. I purposely split a couple of them so that they would have more than one center. But when you rough up that fabric and you kind of poke it inside and mess with it as you're tying that center, you end up with all these little like holes and folds and it ends up making that center part of the geode really cool looking. And then as far as the gravity part, I think that part looks really cool too. I love how the die just kind of streaks down through there and it almost looks like it has dimension, especially on the front part, you know, right underneath that geode where it kind of streaks into some green and some darker purple. It almost looks three dimensional right there. I just really think that the gravity dies always look so unique. Each one is totally different. I mean, that's kind of the way it is with all tie dye, but the way the dye moves and how much of it gets wicked through the shirt, I think it's just a really fun technique to work with. But what do you guys think? Do you like this gravity dye? Do you like the geodes, the colors? Please drop me some comments down below and let me know. I've tried a whole bunch of gravity dyes and done a whole bunch of different techniques with gravity dye, but if you have any suggestions of something maybe you'd like to see, let me know. It's summertime, so it's the perfect time for me to be able to gravity dye outside. And if you've enjoyed the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'll hit the bell, you'll receive a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.